I love that any role can pivot into cybersecurity. And one of the roles that absolutely can do it is a K through 12 teacher. Today, I'm wicked excited to be sharing with you Jonathan Nelson's story as he went from K through 12 teacher into becoming a cybersecurity engineer. He's gonna be sharing with us exactly why he wanted to transition from teaching into cybersecurity, the challenges that he encountered on his path to get into cyber, what skills he got from teaching that were instantly transferable into his role in the industry, and what lessons learned Jonathan will share with you so you can go from teaching to cyber as fast as possible. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, glad to be here today. Uh, I'm looking forward to chatting about my transition to the cybersecurity field. Absolutely, so Jonathan, thank you so much for your time. First question, why did you want to make the transition from K through 12 teacher, I think it was eighth grade, right? Into becoming yep. a cybersecurity engineer. First, let me start off by saying that I love working with the kids and seeing that spark when they learn something, when you finally get something to click. And I think a lot of teachers that hesitate to make that leap, uh, part of it is that guilt of leaving those kids. You gotta make sure you're taking care of yourself as well. Right before COVID kind of hit back in 2020, where uh, I kind of hit a groove in teaching where I wasn't really learning new things. I was kind of good at what I did. And so just every day kind of started to repeat itself. And one of my favorite things in life is to like learn new things and engage myself. And I felt like I was missing that spark. So, and I've always kind of played around with tech. So I wanted to make that leap so that I could force myself into a position where I'd have to learn something new just about every day. And that's been true so far. Yeah, that that is interesting. Uh, career stagnation, not not feeling challenged. I could certainly see that as a motivation and a hundred percent right. Cybersecurity will never, never get stale. I mean, that's part of the part of the, the gig is that you have to constantly stay uh, up. So you make the decision, you're gonna go from teaching into cybersecurity. What challenges did you encounter along that path? Uh, you know, first and foremost, imposter syndrome is a killer. For a while, you know, I held back because I just didn't think it was something I could do. So, you know, I had to get that confidence in myself to make that leap. Secondly, making that transition, it is a ton of information and knowledge that you've got to absorb and be able to take in to, to comprehend what you're going to do. And then, you know, the other thing you got to realize is while cybersecurity is the goal, of what a lot of people want to do, a lot of times it's not going to be a straight path. Uh, so like I had to do a little bit of help desk for a while just to get that IT experience and, uh, you know, start networking with people. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the help desk is a, a common first step in, in kind of making that pivot. Uh, I love that you said it wasn't a straight line. A lot of people just see it and think that it, you know, oh, that's how you do that. That's very successful, like lucky him. And it's like, no, actually it was a lot of work and uh, it was a, a squiggly path, right? Right, kind of going all over the place just to get to the place you want to go, like uh, Billy from Family Circus. <laughs> that's right. And I love that you mentioned networking. Can you just uh, spend a minute and talk about what the value was of networking in your career journey? Yeah. So um, I had two, well, three primary places of networking locally. You can look for clubs and groups that get together and just chat about cybersecurity and trends and things like that. Um, and those are good for finding other people that already work in jobs around you so that you can maybe get a, a foot in the door with them if they like you. The second place I did a lot of networking was building a LinkedIn profile, doing a lot of positive posts, talking about my journey, uh, those kind of things so that, you know, as my network grew and people like, you know, what they were seeing on my journey and my desire to learn, kind of my positive qualities that I brought to the table. I'm, I regularly get messages from recruiters, probably two to three messages a day. And then the last place I really networked was with the school that I went back uh, for a degree so that I could uh, be more knowledgeable. Uh, they had a discord server with a couple thousand people on it and you know and we talked a lot about cybersecurity and um, just kind of different things that they were seeing out there as well you know that's uh it's key for trying to get into cybersecurity because really it's all about who you know at the end of the day because they want to know that they can trust you coming in yeah absolutely networking is super valuable i do want to remind everybody if you're looking for a community to join jonathan mentioned discord server for his school that's absolutely a good one but if you don't uh, have one off the top of your head 
consider joining the Simply Cyber Discord server. I'll put a link in the description below. Great community, very inclusive, very supportive folks over there um, all the time uh, sharing information. And it's a great cybersecurity community, great way to network. So, Jonathan, I want to take it to transferable skills. So a lot of people may think like, oh, I've got to completely start over being a um, you know, switching from teaching into cybersecurity, but what kind of skills did you find were transferable into the industry? Yeah, great question. Um, well, number one, uh, people skills. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the uh, people that you're ending up having to support are gonna be very similar to the students that you had to teach at one point. Uh, a lot of them don't have appropriate behaviors and you've gotta be able to keep your calm and kind of make people feel special, which is something teachers do on a daily basis. You know, a couple other things, teachers are frequently asked to add a, uh, you know, drop of a hat to take in an immense amount of knowledge and then tell other people how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can't even tell you the number of times I've seen like a history teacher have to suddenly go and uh, pick up a math class because that teacher is out for the month. So we're able to pivot very naturally, uh, which is something that you see quite often in cybersecurity. Um, another thing is, you know, we can take a workload that's just enormous and make it manageable, which is a quality thing to do in this field. And, uh, you know, I find that people are often impressed with the amount of work that I'm able to take on and handle. You know, and, and teachers also have a skill that I'm not really sure can be taught even. It's just something that we have naturally, but the ability to take a problem and troubleshoot it and come up with creative or outside of the box answers absolutely and, and i would i would also think you know I, I was not a teacher but i would think you know you do well i guess i do teach at a college but you have to plan out a you know a curriculum a, a project plan with learning objectives and, and really structure out what a course is going to look like or what the educational model looks like so i would think a lot of that kind of planning and structure skill set would transfer nicely into uh, a cybersecurity role as well. Oh yeah, and I, uh, one of the things that I've been doing a good bit is um, as I learn things, the way I learn is by documenting them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm a very thorough uh, documentarian and it kind of has helped others that have come on board after me as I share that information. Um, and then obviously the, the skills I've had from teaching, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of times in IT in general, people have a lack of ability to understand that Others may not know the steps to get to mm -hmm. the, the objective. And I've always assumed never just think that someone has that knowledge ahead of time. And so, you know, that ground up ability so that when I teach someone how to do something, they really do walk away with the knowledge of how to do that and why we do that. Oh, I love it. I, that's awesome. So let me ask you this, Jonathan, you know, there's definitely going to be some K through 12 teachers watching this right now that say, all right, I, you know, I've been on the fence about it. I'm ready to make the move to cybersecurity. What kind of lessons learned looking back? Can you share with them? What would you have done differently on your journey from teacher to cybersecurity professional? I don't know that I would have done anything differently. I feel like I took a really good path. Um, first, I went to Western Governors University, which is a competency based school um, that allows you to work at your own pace. And I just threw everything I had into that program. Um, and it, it's a great program because you end up with a, a ton of industry certs. Like, you know, they start you from basics and all the way up to having the skills that you need in these jobs. Uh, you know, you get the A plus, net plus, security plus, all those great things. But, you know, from before I started that, the very first thing I, I do with anything I take on, honestly, is I set up a plan with realistic goals and objectives of how I'm going to achieve those goals along the way. Um, and then I make sure that I'm banking the appropriate amount of time. Um, but you've got to be very thorough in that process or you're going to leave yourself opening for, you know, setbacks that you can't handle. The networking was just critical. Um, if you don't do that, you're going to have a hard time getting into cybersecurity. Uh, you know, the, I would say the only thing I wish is that I had jumped on that sooner. And I also wish I had jumped on using uh, Try Hack Me sooner because that's also a great uh, platform for learning the skills you need. I love it. Yeah. Like as I'm wearing a try hack me advent of cyber shirt right now, great, great uh, reference, Jonathan, and a hundred percent agree. Uh, I hear it time and time again, that networking uh, is so vitally important. Wish I had done it sooner. That's definitely a key takeaway for anybody who's watching this networking within the community is huge. I know WGU does have a great cybersecurity discord server. It is restricted to WGU students exclusively. 
I, I've, I've spoken to WGU, or I've spoken to students of WGU many times and uh, tried to get onto the server afterwards for uh, follow-up conversations, but been unable to. Uh, but, but, but very, very cool. Um, Jonathan, I, I really want to say thank you. I appreciate you sharing your story, helping other teachers make this pivot into cybersecurity. Uh, if you're interested in connecting with Jonathan, he is on LinkedIn. I don't know if your LinkedIn's are open, Jonathan, or not, but it sounds like yeah. you're into networking. Yep, they're, they're open. Um, and I'll say, I know some people have told me that sometimes it feels fake when you're pos you know, being positive and putting all that stuff out there. Um, and you know what? Just do it. And after a little while, you'll actually start to feel that energy and uh, it kind of feeds itself and helps push you. So make sure you're getting out there. Absolutely. Words of wisdom from Jonathan. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for your time. And thank you all uh, for, for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.